Good morning, my name is Damien Ivory. I run a, a small RSP in Tasmania called Lontel. Uh, and I've promised to answer any questions you asked on, uh, on this YouTube channel. Now, NF Sutim sent me a list of 12 questions, which I sort of wrote down so that I could remember them all. Um, what I'm going to do is actually to record separate videos for a, sort of a group of the questions. Um, so the first question he asks is about internal wiring uh, with fibre of the node uh, and whether it is worth getting in an electrician to, uh, to check it and, um, and if necessary uh, sort of sort any issues out. My immediate answer is, de is a definite yes. It's uh, very much worthwhile doing this. Um, there are two reasons for this. The first is that it gives you confidence. Um, when you get issues with your, sorry, I shouldn't say when, but let's say <laughs> if you uh, get issues with your fiber of the node services, um, if you've had your house checked out by an electrician um, who presumably knows what he's doing, uh, you can be confident that you're not that that your internal wiring is not the problem and it is something further out on the street um, and this is very helpful to talk when you're talking to your RSP um, to uh, to sort of say that and if you know I don't know I, I wish there was some certificate or something you get but anyway why is it important to sort out your internal wiring so Fibre of the Node uses a technology called VDSL. Now this is essentially a big upgrade on the previous technology called ADSL, which essentially itself, they're both technologies that use the copper wires for something they were never intended for. Copper wires, when they were first laid some 50 years ago, were used for telephone calls, and that was it. Telephone calls are a very low frequency uh, uh, application which uses, uh, which doesn't really care about whether the sockets are in the right place or whether they're connected well. It'll still work. You might get a crackly phone line or something like that, but that's the worst that can happen. Unfortunately, you come up with uh, ADSL uh, created a lot of faults in the early days. They got fixed. VDSL creates a whole load of new ones because they both use, as I say, they both use that, te that, that copper technology in a way that was never designed for. It's sort of ramming these high frequency signals and doing it with enough amplitude, enough power, so that some of it, a very small amount, will make it down to the far end, which is why distance is so important. Um, because obviously the further that signal has to go, the less likely is it to, that it's going to make it. It's somewhat akin to shouting loudly in a, across a crowded room to try and get your message across. Uh, it'll only go so far. The other problem with, uh, with the VDSL is that it's very subject to uh, reflections um, and interference. Um, when you have multiple sockets in a house, for example, the wire will come in, it'll come to some sort of dividing junction point, um, and, then, uh, and then the signal effectively gets sort of divided in power down each of the lines uh, to get to the socket. Um, that's what they call a star wiring. Um, now, you're only using one of those sockets, so your sig if you've got three sockets in the house, this is a bit simplified, but essentially you're only getting a third of the signal going down to that uh, particular socket. So it's well worth getting all those other so sockets physically disconnected. Um, the second problem is reflections, um, where the signal will go down those other legs, if you like, those other links, and get to the end and then bounce back. Uh, and it will interfere with the original signal that was coming down from the node. Um, so. That again will will do two things. First of all, it will reduce your speed, but I think this is a this is a really important point. Fiber of the nose problem isn't speed; it's reliability. Is you start getting dropouts. Uh, is literally it's so noisy that the modem can't keep sync with the node, and uh, you lose your connection for uh, 30 seconds while it has a go at it. You can tell if this is happening because your DSL light will start flashing or at least go off. Um, and that's uh, that's generally the caused by you know by a loss of sync. Um, so definitely get your house sorted out with a, by an electrician. Um, I'm just on a on a bigger point. It is one of the areas of what I call cost shifting, where the MBN uh, decided to go for a cheaper technology, um, but essentially put the cost of making your wiring 
back onto the user, back onto you. Um, whereas with the fiber to the premises, of course, um, they laid a completely new fiber and so uh, you didn't have to pay for that side of it. So it's all very well the uh, MBN saying, hey, fiber to the node is cheaper. It's like, yeah, but everybody else has to pay other extra bits because of that. Um, second question is about coexistence. So coexistence is where during the early days when it's first turned on, fiber to the node is first turned on, um, there is this period of 18 months where people have to transition to the MBN before their old service is disconnected, their ADSL or their phone or whatever. Um, now, because there's a period where people are running both, uh, they're running fiber to the node MBN and they're running the old ADSL, um, MBN decided to turn down the power of the nodes. This is to limit the amount of interference. Uh, many people who've been on ADSL will notice that as soon as fiber of the node gets turned on, suddenly the reliability of their network goes down, their ADSL connection goes down, um, and that's exactly that reason. So, fiber, so coexistence was introduced to reduce that to some level. It's not complete, it still does cause interference, but it will, uh, it will allow the two to literally coexist, that's what the name comes from. Um, the, uh, the other side effect of coexistence is MBN, somewhat sneakily I think, uh, took the government mandate minimum speed of 25 megabits, which was uh, widely touted in various elections and the like, and essentially said, yeah, but during coexistence, because we're running lower power, we're only going to guarantee you 12 megabits. Um, so it basically means if you lodge a fault, if you're getting, I don't know, 18 megabits or something like that, MBN can turn around and go, ah, coexistence, no, we're not fixing it, or we're not doing anything. Um, so anyway, the 18 months uh, passed, and MBN mysteriously did not turn off coexistence, i.e. turn the nodes up to the full power. Uh, from what I can tell, they never said anything about this officially. Um, now, I think there are two reasons for this. Firstly, is they realized that the moment they turned off coexistence, suddenly they'll have to get everybody up to 25 megabits, um, which would be uh, very costly, and I don't think they had the workforce to actually suddenly uh, you know, deal with the flood of faults uh, that people could now lodge. The second reason is there's a technology called ISDN, which is a phone technology used by businesses. Now, this is another copper technology. It also is subject to interference from the fiber to the node and uh, various big telcos, particularly Telstra, um, petitioned the ACCC to keep extending this uh, deadline because they hadn't had time to get their clients off, uh, off ISDN. Um, my take on it is unfortunately when uh, Telstra is quite aware that when, uh, when the technology change is enforced, that's also the point where customers start looking around for alternate. And so they were happy to keep their existing clients on ISDN for, for a few months or years longer um, and keep uh, generating uh, that income. Um, so that's the reason why it has been delayed. We have joined up to a program, um, a testing program, a sort of pre-release program, where while we don't get coexistence turned off, we can at least lodge faults up to 25 megabits. Um, now, uh, I presume that's MBN's way of sort of trying to get rid of some of the faults uh, before they, they go sort of full bore, if you like. Uh, the final question, which I'll answer in this video, and I'll do another one on the other questions, is uh, fiber of the node versus fiber of the premises uh, reliability. Um, there is no question that fiber of the premises is massively more reliable. Um, it also, well, first of all, it doesn't suffer from distance, right? So it doesn't really matter how far you are away from the, um, the distribution point. It's, a, not, it's not called a node, it's called a, um, uh, it's basically goes all the way back to the old exchange. Um, but essentially it's completely unlimited by distance. It doesn't matter how far you are away, you'll get the full speed. Um, but more to the point, you, it is reliable. It is probably orders of magnitude, probably a hundred times more reliable. And the other great thing about fiber is that when it fails, it just stops. Um, we probably have had very few faults. I mean, on the thousands of customers we have, I can only think of one or two which were sort of showing uh, you know, a degradation of any sort. Typically, 
you look on the uh, MBM box, if it's got a red optical light, that basically means it can't see the fiber signal. Boom, lodge a case with MBN, they fix it, and, uh, and Bob's your uncle. With fiber to the node, as an RSP, and even you know for for, uh, for our users, they're left wondering: Oh, is my modem working properly? Is my wiring all right? Is it raining? Uh, all this sort of stuff, and you're just never sure where the fault is. And so, um, the RSPs and MBN and the users spend hours, uh, frankly, dicking about trying to find the fault. Um, and this is is you know it's very costly uh, from the point of view of MBN and the RSP and it's also very inconvenient for the user. Um, so there is, yeah, there's absolutely no question that uh, fibre to the premises is uh, is way more reliable than uh, than fibre to the node. Um, interesting, in the Four Corners last night they actually um, uh, did talk about this, um, not Four Corners, sorry, um, 7.30 report. Um, they did actually talk about the difference between fibre to the node and fibre to the premises and interviewed two people and uh, they saw exactly uh, what I'm talking about is the guy on fiber of the node he had good speeds but it would drop out um, now in that particular case um, I think there may well there, there well there's clearly some wiring issues somewhere in there um, the, the, to cause those sort of dropouts uh, but fiber of the premises it basically either works or it doesn't and if it doesn't work lodge a fault uh, problem solved um, Whereas uh, fiber of the node, it's it's just an enormous waste of uh, of resources, and this is uh, obviously adds to the cost of uh, of mm -hmm. running the service. And of course, if you're running a business, um, this is extremely costly in terms of staff downtime and the like um, to get this fixed. Okay, I'll end this video and start another one for the other questions.